Unravel the mystery behind a man's sudden personality change and shocking diagnosis. Discover how a brain tumor transformed his life and relationships. But first, am I the butthole? My husband wants a divorce and wants us to keep the house. Posted by Deleted. My husband, 32, and I, 30, have been married for 10 years. Recently he told me that he wanted a divorce because he wasn't happy. He came to the conclusion that he never really wanted to be married and wants to focus on his military career. I had always supported his career. I asked him for couples therapy because all of the problems he said we had were things that could be fixed, but he refuses and said our marriage can't be fixed. I have no choice but to let him go. However, he believes that him and I can still live in our house and live our separate lives and he's already dating a girl from work. I cannot do this. When I told him that I wasn't comfortable with him dating yet, he accuses me of wanting to prevent him from moving on. I made it clear that if he wishes to date, he can do so, but I will not sit here and watch him do it because it kills me. I told him that I need to get away from him so that I can heal, and I refuse to live in the house while he goes off and starts a whole new life while somehow maintaining his old one. I told him I want to sell the house and he's accusing me of trying to ruin him financially, especially because our mortgage is so low. I am currently half a year away from my bachelor's degree that would allow me to find a steady job as the job that I currently have now does not pay enough for me to live on my own. However, I have a large support system that is willing to help me. So basically what I am asking is am I the butthole for wanting to move on with my life, even if it means that I have to force him to sell our house. Edit to add some details, our marriage hasn't been great for a while and I knew this, so the last 6 months I've been trying to fix things. He however has told me he wanted this divorce months ago and was building up the courage to ask for the divorce. I know that what he's asking for is delusional, but I guess I feel bad because he gave me a portion of his GE bill for my schooling which he's now threatening to take away. That's no big deal because again I have a good support system. I am graduating with a science degree and in my area I know I can find a good job with it. He just assumed that since we always got along well, that I would go along with his plan. And now to the update. So this is a small update from my last post. Thank you to mostly everyone for being so kind. I have been in contact with a lawyer and all of my bases are covered there. I told him that I was not budging and that our house was going to be sold or he can buy me out. He has agreed to sell. The interesting part is that the girl he has been seeing was under the impression that I was okay with their arrangement. He basically told her that we were separated but still living together. She now knows the truth and does not want to see him. We met up and compared text messages and stories and he has been lying to her. Why he thought I couldn't easily just search her up and get in contact with her is beyond me. But I had a feeling he was lying to her. When it was explained to him that what he did it was completely wrong, he is now remorseful and apologetic for hurting me. I don't believe him. Either way this divorce is going to happen and good luck to the next girl that deals with him. I have started therapy to help me adjust but I know that I am going to be okay and honestly I don't want to be with someone who is willing to hurt me like that. That is all for now. Did you ever experience something similar? Feel free to share. It's unfortunate that he believes living separately in their shared home and dating someone else is a reasonable solution for his desire for a divorce. The fact that he lied to his new girlfriend about the status of his marriage only adds to the complexity of this situation. My 32-year-old male ex-wife, 33-year-old female, divorced me after a personality change. I found out I have a brain tumor. How do I move forward? Posted by Deleted. My 32-year-old male ex-wife, 33-year-old female, divorced me in 2022. I was devastated, but I couldn't blame her. We had been together for about six years and for a while, we had an incredible relationship. We had a memorable engagement in Belize, a long story involving bats, getting stranded at the Mayan ruins where I proposed to her, and being rescued by a passing British military exercise, but that's a whole other story. I won't wax poetic about it, but suffice to say it's the happiest I've ever been. And I think I made her very happy too. She was my best friend and we were ready to spend the rest of our lives together. I was extremely close to her whole family as well. I was her brother's best man at his wedding. But then the troubles started. My mental health took a steep decline. My behavior was extremely erratic and bizarre, when we were in public I often thought I was being followed. One time I became convinced listening devices had been implanted in our home. I thought the police or government agencies were after me and monitoring my devices. My wife finally dragged me to the emergency room after one of these incidents and I ended up getting diagnosed as having a psychotic break with bipolar and schizoaffective disorder. My wife stood by me through it all. But even on treatment, I continued my strange behavior and thought patterns. 
There was lying in substance abu. Previously, I'd only ever drank socially and occasionally smoked plants. It was all very out of character for me, I'd always been a very stable person. But I seemed to be spiraling. One day my wife had enough and told me she wanted a divorce. She'd caught me lying about non-legal substance use. For a while I maintained contact with her brother who tried to support us both through it. But eventually he cut me off too. In the year following the divorce, I tried emailing and texting my wife and her brother, but eventually I got the hint. Mutual friends dropped me too. I couldn't blame anybody. I think additional lies and misbehaviors had come to light, so I was a pariah. I sank pretty low, lost multiple jobs, and barely scraped by. Fast forward to now. I am still struggling, but I've managed to hold a good well-paying job and even bought a few properties. I got a new little pup named Archie who keeps me going when times get tough. I've kept at therapy and it's definitely helped. But recently while traveling I suddenly collapsed. I went to the hospital and when the doctor heard my history he immediately ordered an MRI. The look on his face and his whole demeanor spooked me, like he suspected something I didn't want to tell me, but he insisted on just waiting to see and not speculating. Lo and behold, I have a brain tumor. The funny thing is, when I found out, I was. Relieved? Finally, it all made sense. Apparently it's not unheard of for such a thing to be misdiagnosed as bipolar. The doctors say it's probably been growing slowly for a long time and explains my strange and out of character behavior. Thankfully they think it's treatable and with surgery, I stand to make a good recovery. So how do I move forward with this? I want to try to reach out to my ex-wife and her brother. But maybe they've moved on with their lives and I shouldn't try to reinsert myself. I've done enough damage as it is. They don't seem to want to have any contact with me. But I also feel like they should know. They may have blocked my number and email, but I do still gave some mutual friends I could reach out through. For all I know, my wife is in another relationship and I shouldn't reopen those wounds. But if the roles were reversed, I'd want her to let me know. So how should I move forward here? What, if anything, should I say? Told her. Wife divorced me after I had a personality change. Turns out I have a brain tumor. Not sure what to do next. And now to the update. So first off, thanks everybody for the comments and advice. I didn't expect my post to get as much attention as it did, but it was really helpful to get some perspective. Not to mention lots of support including some very thoughtful messages. It got reposted on other places. I didn't even realize there was an entire ecosystem of TikToks devoted to rehashing Reddit posts. I guess I am old lol, including some news sites and a few journalists and podcasters reached out to me. I am touched that my story seemed to resonate with some people. But I am a pretty private person and I am working through a lot right now. So apologies if I haven't responded to your message. Long story short, I've decided not to contact my ex or her brother for the time being. I know some people were probably rooting for a happier or at least more interesting ending, but this is how I'm handling things for now. I think the majority of the comments on my last post encouraged me to reach out, just to inform my ex of the situation and maybe give her some closure. Some suggested making a post on social media so it would get back to her, or delivering a message through a mutual friend. For a while, something along these lines is what I wanted to do. Now, for the social media thing, I don't actually have any social media other than an Instagram account for my pup Archie, with like 10 followers, and a Facebook account using a fake name with zero friends. I use it for Marketplace. But that's kinda besides the point. I think more importantly, not reaching out right now just feels like the right move. I guess the true question is, what would be the best way to handle this for my ex? How does this affect her? And honestly, the more I think about it, the more it seems like reaching out is the selfish move. She's always been a strong, resilient person, so I have no doubt she's managed to build a good life and move on. And I'd just be potentially interfering with that, stirring up old hurts and wounds and maybe adding a lot of confusion and other complicated emotions. And then, for the selfish perspective. I don't think it would be good for me either. I admit, a part of me fantasized about a situation where we got back together, all was forgiven and we lived happily ever after. But I think that's exactly the problem. I realized there was no way I was going to be able to temper my expectations. So right now, with everything going on, it probably would be a bad thing to add into the mix. I'll always love my ex-wife. We grew up together. I loved all her quirks and her silliness and her strength, the way she always stood up for what she believed in. The fact that we always had so much fun together, whether we were playing a board game, she'd learn quick and kick my butt, except for race for the galaxy, or buying a house, or going on a bike ride somewhere, or overanalyzing a movie or TV show we'd watch together. 
She's brilliant and hilarious and gorgeous. And a total weirdo. Very eerie early in our relationship she asked whether I was a barfer or a shitter when I got sick. I was also the DM for a D&D campaign that she played in, and her goblin rogue will always be peak tabletop gaming to me. I loved hearing her thoughts about everything. I miss her every day. And who knows, maybe we'll reconnect at some point in the future. I am not ruling out ever contacting her. And in case it wasn't clear in my last post, I never thought my tumor exonerated me of responsibility for everything I've done. I know I still need to take ownership of my actions and learn and grow from this. So that's what I'm going to focus on, getting better. My surgery is getting scheduled and then I'll just have to take it one step at a time. There's a lot of other stuff going on too. I was applying and interviewing for jobs before all this and actually got two offers recently, so I'll be communicating with them about whether we could delay the start date, and worst case, if not, my current job is secure and medical leave won't be a problem. I also bought another property, although the sale is still conditional so I could walk away if I have to. We'll see how it goes. All this to say, life is pretty hectic right now. But I honestly feel good. And for the first time in several years, I am looking forward to what comes next, whatever that may be. Anyway, thanks again everybody for reading and commenting, sharing your advice and stories, well wishes and love. I may post another update down the line, but fair warning, I am hoping it's just as boring as this one. Told her I am just going to just leave my ex and her family alone for now, and focus on getting better. Also, I shared this in a comment on the last post, but I'll put it here too. Pics of Archie. It's unfortunate that mental health issues were not addressed sooner, potentially leading to a marriage ending and causing unnecessary pain for all involved. I hope the OP receives proper treatment and support during this challenging time. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Am I the butthole? My mom gave my sister 40 key and tried to keep it a secret from me. Posted by Deleted. Hey everyone. To provide some context, let me share a bit of background. I, 35-year-old female, am the oldest of four siblings, with my middle sister Sally, 32-year-old female, and her twin brothers, both 20-year-old male. Money was always tight while we were growing up. To make ends meet, my dad worked two three jobs a day, and my mom worked night shifts, leaving us with limited time with our parents during the week. Since my parents were busy working, I took on a significant role in raising my siblings and managing household chores from a young age. I started working at 16, doing waitress jobs, while also taking care of homework, household chores, and looking after our pet. My dad always appreciated my efforts, but my mom didn't show the same recognition. She often favored Sally, treating her as the golden child who could do no wrong. Despite this, Sally and I are close, although she lacks street smarts and understanding of the real world. Fast forward to the present. I worked hard throughout my 20s, alongside my husband, diligently saving money. Meanwhile, Sally and her husband faced frequent financial struggles. My mom would often ask me to lend money to Sally, and whenever we hung out, I ended up footing the bill for dinners and drinks. Despite being a lawyer and earning more than me, Sally struggled with debt due to her spending habits. When my husband and I bought our first home at 30, Sally seemed envious but never explicitly showed it. Last year, Sally and her husband surprised everyone by purchasing a new townhouse in a prestigious neighborhood. During her housewarming party, I overheard Sally's husband mentioning that they couldn't have bought the house without Sally's mom. Confused I asked him and he revealed that my mom had given them 40k as a deposit for the house. I was shocked as my mom had never given me any money. I chose not to confront Sally or my mom immediately and discussed it with my husband instead. Months passed and I finally brought up the issue with Sally during dinner. When her card got declined I ended up paying the bill and when she mentioned being broke I snapped, questioning her expensive choice of restaurant when she couldn't afford it. In the heat of the argument, I blurted out that my mom had funded her new house. Sally tearfully admitted that it was a gift from mom, sourced from her inheritance after our grandmother's ain't alive, with explicit instructions not to tell me and my brothers. I argued that it wasn't fair for mom to give her such a substantial amount without considering her other children. Our argument continued all the way home, with Sally expressing remorse for not telling me, but insisting they needed the money to buy the house as they couldn't save enough on their own. Later that night I confided in my dad who urged me to apologize to Sally despite understanding my frustration. I plan to speak to Sally soon as we are close but I am still too angry to confront my mom about the money. So Reddit, am I the butthole for yelling at my sister and making her cry? Edit, hi everyone. Just wanted to say thanks for the replies and advice, it means a lot. My immediate action now it stop giving my sister money. 
She already called asking if I would go see a band with her, but if I could grab the tickets and she will pay me back next week, I told her no. That I am done spending my money on her. She took it pretty okay. Was a little shocked but didn't press the issue. There are some big updates happening regarding the money and my brothers, but I want to wait till it's played out a little more before I update again. And now to the update. Hey, everyone. And now to the next update. Sorry for the delay, I've been on the road for work and taking some much needed rest. First off, I reached out to my sister, Sally, and apologized for yelling at her. She assured me there was no need to apologize and express feeling bad about the situation. Later that week, Sally and her husband invited me over for dinner to talk things out. During our conversation, they both apologized for not disclosing the money and keeping it a secret. They confessed that despite their efforts to save for a house independently, Sally had accumulated a significant amount of undisclosed debt making it impossible for them to purchase a home without the money our mom provided. While I believe Sally's assertion that our mom offered the money without being directly asked, I can't shake the feeling that there's more to the story, given Sally's knack for subtly seeking assistance. I explained to them that while their apologies were appreciated, the fundamental issue remains that they deceived me, and I only found out by mistake, suggesting they had no intention of coming clean. I emphasized the importance of trust in our relationship. I then asked if our brothers were aware of the situation, which they were not. I urged Sally to inform them, which she did. Both brothers were understandably upset, primarily directing their anger towards our mom and sought further details. Sally relayed the same information to them as she had to me. Their main question echoed mine, why had our mom chosen to assist Sally and not any of us? They recounted instances where they had openly discussed financial struggles, this is one reason they joined the military. My husband and I have openly disused money with our parents and made significant sacrifices to save for homes, yet our mom hadn't offered financial aid to any of us. Contemplating whether to confront our mom directly, I ultimately decided that she might not be forthcoming with me. Instead, I had Sally call her with me present on speakerphone to pose the questions. The bottom line, Sally plans to start a family, whereas my brothers and I are child-free by choice. Sally is the only one intending to give our mom grandchildren. Upon hearing this, I couldn't hold back my hurt and frustration. I confronted our mom, expressing how her favoritism felt like a betrayal. Initially resistant, she eventually relented, admitting that Sally's future plans factored into her decision to help her purchase a house. Mom said things like Sally is going to give my grandkids, so needs a house child-free couples, travel so much you really are never home, so you don't need a house, etc. I wish I could say I delivered a great comeback, but in reality, I was overcome with emotion and left in tears. I spoke to my brothers alone after all this and told them everything, they also said it was very unfair. Turns out the youngest brother's girlfriend is Tokes pregnant. They had not told anyone yet as it's so early and they are now considering not telling mom and all. The following day, Sally visited me to talk more, but I didn't want to talk about it anyone. I've resigned myself to the fact that further probing won't yield any solace. I have my answer. I did however inform Sally that I won't be footing the bill for our outings anymore. If she wants to dine out, it's her turn to treat me or will opt for home-cooked meals at her place. Regarding our mom, I've maintained very limited contact with her for years, and it may be time to cut ties altogether. For now, both my husband and I have blocked her on all communication channels. It's concerning how a mother could favor one child over others and make significant financial decisions without considering the fairness towards her other children. Subscribe for more cute cats and daily reddit stories. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Have a meowvelous day and see you in the next one.